All right, this is video seven in our series of videos discussing different signal properties. In this video, we're going to talk briefly about deterministic and random signals. All right, so first let's talk about deterministic signals. Here's our definition of a deterministic signal. And a deterministic signal is simply one that behaves in a fixed way as a function of time. So when you're working with deter deterministic signals, there's absolutely no uncertainty about the values at any given time. For example, x of k equals 0.5 to the k. This is a deterministic signal. If you tell me the value for k, I can plug it in right here and compute 0.5 to whatever value k you gave me and get out a number for the discrete time signal x of k at that time. And no matter what time k you give me, this equation is true and I can compute it exactly. So to be honest, most of the time in undergrad classes, you've been dealing with deterministic signals all the time. We just haven't gone to the care of defining them as deterministic signals, but that's exactly what they are. And you've spent a lot of time worrying about how do linear systems change deterministic signals? How do I analyze deterministic signals in the frequency domain? All these different things you've been learning how to do have been restricted to this class of signals, deterministic signals. A random signal is very different. A random signal is one in which there is some uncertainty in its value before it occurs. We will not study random signals in the current class that we're discussing. Undergrad linear systems classes, both continuous time and discrete time, deal almost exclusively with deterministic signals. It's really not to the end of your undergraduate career if you're lucky, or most often your first classes that you'll take as a graduate student when you'll cover random signals in what's usually called a course on random processes. So if you get to take a course on random processes, you'll study things called like X of T. X of T is obviously a continuous time signal, but notice that it's using a capital X. So as you get used to seeing capital letters like that, that usually indicates that they are random processes, which means if you tell me T, I don't really know what X of T is equal to. At some time T, it's actually this random variable quantity. So beforehand, I don't have a nice equation like this that I can write down for X of T. There's actually uncertainty at every time T about the underlying value of the signal X of T. So they're much more complicated to analyze, but you'll end up wanting to do many of the same things. You'll want to know what happens when I have a random process and put it through a linear system, for instance. What happens if I have a random process and I want to understand its frequency content? How do I go about doing that? So it's very important to be able to do those types of things. And it's also very important to understand random processes because just about every type of communication system or radar system or data collection asset that you'll ever work with in the real world is corrupted by noise. And noise is itself a random process. So while you might record data that consists of deterministic quantities like this, they're almost always corrupted by noise. That's a random component. So almost all real world signal processing, communication theory, random process theory, radar signal processing, you have to be able to analyze these types of random quantities. All right, that's it for now. Just a brief discussion of deterministic signals and random signals for this class. Just uh, deterministic signals are the only ones we'll worry about, but many more cool things to come as you get into your graduate career looking at random processes.